Yo, what's up, everybody? It's your boy Bo here. I'm back with some more Truth and Fact Sports Talk. All right, shout out to the movement and everybody's moving with us. Shout out to Three Kings Boxing, where you can go to threekingsboxing.com and you get all the latest and greatest of what's going on in boxing. As a matter of fact, this interview is being brought to you by Three Kings Boxing. All right, joining me as always on on the show, my brother, my partner in crime, my man Cesar Rebus. What's going on, man? Yo, yo, what's up, man? What's up? Beautiful day, beautiful day. Well, at least down here in Florida, anyway. Now, I finna say, that's because you in Florida. It ain't no beautiful day, man. I got soggy <laughs> roads and stuff out here, man. All right. And, of course, we are we are being joined by my man, Philip Bowes. What's going on, man? Oh, wait a minute. I think he might. Phillip. I think he dropped out. Hold on. Oh, no. We'll get him the back. Silver Bullet. Listen in action. <laughs> we're getting back. Yeah, no, nah, I ain't worried about that now. Got to get past hands back in here. All right, let's see if we can get him back. Yeah, man, nice and early. Early bird gets the worm type of show, eh, Bo? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Yo. So we got two. All right, Phil, you back? You back with us? <laughs> yeah, I'm back, man. Yeah, man, I don't know what happened there, man. It's cut off, man, but yeah, I'm back, man. All right, all right, all right. Hey, Phil, I was waiting for you to say I'm back and better than ever, man. <laughs> yeah. Hey, well, actually, that's 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 actually right. what he is. I'm, I'm back like I never left. I'm back like I never left. How about that? Yeah. yeah there we go. There we go. There we go. <laughs> there, we go. <laughs> there we go. All right, my man Philip is here to talk to us today, man. Of course, he's a super lightweight fighter out in the UK. Uh, interesting story about Philip, man. You know, he picked up boxing kind of late, and uh, you was telling us you was we we, mean, we was talking. Actually, I've actually talked to you before with the guys from Pep Talk, and um, you've had some ups and downs in your career, man. But here lately, you seem to be finding your footing, man. You had two surprising victories, man. Yeah, man. Like, I mean, boy, you know, like you know, the boxing. You know, we all know it nowadays. It's not a sport no more. It's a it's a business, you know. So. Mm-hmm. Like, if your face, it seems like if your face don't fit or, you know, you're too outspoken, they don't want to let you through the gate. I mean, you can only speak and be outspoken when you get to the top. But if you're coming up and you're outspoken and you start telling people how it is, they don't want to let you through the gate. But, yeah, man, I had the ups and downs in my career. I mean, but of late, I've just been doing what I've got to do to get to the top, man. And I still think I've got enough in, in me at 34 years old to do what I want to do. Yeah, okay, okay. Now... You was helping Victor Post out. You you was helping Victor Post out prepare for Josh Taylor, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that that was a great experience, man. I mean, they phoned me. I wasn't really um in in in, in shape, like. But when they asked me for the opportunity to spot, they like my style. They said I was slick. I was fast. You know, um, I was the kind of same kind of style as um Josh Taylor. Would I be interested? I couldn't turn it down. I had to. I had to. You know, oblige and say, yeah, man, I'll come and get that work. Right, right. Now, and, and one last thing, uh, you do have a fight coming up, and I think, is is that for the uh, is that for the BBOC or is that for the uh, English title? So, no, Commonwealth title. Commonwealth. So, that's for, that's for all the, um, yeah, all the, um, fighters in the Commonwealth. But before that, I have a warm-up fight in October the 6th, and after that, then I'll, I'll, I'll see what's happening with the Commonwealth, because there's two guys fighting for it first, so when they fight, and then after, I'll fight the winner. I'm, I'm, I'm in the mandatory position right now, so I'm just waiting. I'm sitting back, putting my feet up, and, um, yeah, just waiting patiently for my time. Okay, all right. I'm going to turn it over to my man, Cesar. Cesar, you got a couple questions for our man here? Yeah, absolutely, man. I got a couple questions for the silver bullet, man. I, I, I'm liking <laughs> this guy. Hey, uh, Philip, a couple How questions, you doing, man? man. So, you, good, man, another day. So, I, I, you know, I heard that uh, overhearing that you were in camp with uh, Victor Postal. How was that experience? You know what? It's crazy, man. Like, all right, so you have to remember, I'm going to a, a foreign country, Ukraine. Like, um, I mean, every city has, you know, a diversity of people. So you've got, you know, you know, multicultural pl- a place. You know I mean, you go there, it's multicultural. But the place I was staying was Bovary, and there was no black people there. So imagine I've gone there, and I'm like, damn, like this is crazy. But I didn't hear, I didn't feel no, I didn't feel no racism. There was. Welcoming, welcoming to me. The gym was great. I know people in the street wasn't looking at me like I was like an you know, outcast or nothing. I was accepted. But a country like Ukraine, they accept you if you're an athlete. You know what I'm saying? They love you if you're an athlete. And right. Yeah, it was a great experience, man. But to, to spar with a, a world champion that only at that time lost to um, 
uh, the, the, one of the Bill greats. Crawford. Like, we're going to be Bill a super, Crawford. Um, great. We'll be Crawford. Yeah, he will be a great soon. Like you know, what I mean, just to um, spar someone who only lost to him was a great experience, and I and I was doing good. Like, I mean, I had great spars with him. You know, I'll keep it in house. What happened? <laughs> but I mean, it was great. It was great. I mean, I'd done my thing, and yeah, it, it helped me for my upcoming fights. You know, uh, uh, Phil, I can relate to you 110 percent right there because I've also been a part of several, you know, pro training camps, and there's nothing yeah. like that experience. There's nothing like you know learning from some, you know, from from the elite. And naturally, you're going to pick, you know, one or two things up. But yeah. I'm going to close that statement with, you know, the reason why I love boxing so much. And everyone I meet in boxing, man, first of all, it is a small world. And secondly, it, it you know, gives you the opportunity of traveling the world and meeting new cultures, just as you said. Yeah. You know, going to yeah. Ukraine, would you have ever imagined going to Ukraine when you were younger? Never, man. Never. I mean, I, said, I was saying to um, someone a couple of days ago, I said, boxing is tra- taking me around the world. The country I've never would have never been to. Because of boxing, like the boxing's actually made me see those countries like India, for argument's sake. I would never have gone to India on my of my own back, you know what I'm saying? But I've gone there, I've competed. So I mean, yeah, boxing is actually one of them sports that, you know, you meet brothers in arms, you meet brothers, you meet coaches, you meet, you know, you meet all kinds of people and then you meet you meet friends for life also, you know. And and last question, man. Why boxing? What made you decide? And this is a question I'm gonna start asking everybody. <laughs> I just want to know what motivated you to go pro and make this your living. Why boxing? You know, you know the crazy thing about it. I've always been from a, a com- I've always been from a competitive kind of background. Like when I I done karate, Wing Chun, Taekwondo from a young age, and my mum, you know, she she was against me boxing. So my dad said to her one day, "Listen, look, there's no point of you being upset, being scared of him, like." you know, fighting or being a boxer because he can die, like, on the street, you know, or walking on, on the road, anything could happen. And then, you know, I, I, was, I always had a love for boxing from Mike Tyson days. Um, Even though I don't fight nothing like Mike Tyson, but he's the one that actually got me into in boxing. Like, I got the haircuts like him. I, you know, I, I wanted to be like him. And, um, I mean, I, I mean, I think a lot of guys from the 80s that grew up in an era, you know, they're, they're the ones that Mike Tyson converted a lot of us to boxing. So, Right. You, you have to do what you love. I mean, I love boxing. So to ask your question, I love boxing. So I've I've decided to decided to make it my, you know, my living. I love it, man. Listen, man, something that you and I have in common. It was uh, Tyson <laughs> and Chavez that motivated me into getting into the fight sport. Now, I never turned pro, but I did, you know, compete 35 amateur fights. And yeah, man, I share that same love and passion with you as why I'm here today asking you questions. Still being part of the the boxing field. But look, man, uh, when 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 can when are we gonna see you fight next, man? I want to watch you. O- o- October the sixth, man. <laughs> October the sixth will be my next fight in England. And um, I mean, I'm wait. I, I mean, oh, fingers crossed. I'm I'm J- Jamaica's got um a contender series happening in Jamaica at the moment. Contender, so I might even jump on that next year. You know, I've been talking to the Jamaica boxing board. Been talking about it. You know. I've, I was, I'm quite known over there in the boxing world, so I might even jump on a contender series next year. All right, man. I'll be looking out for you both. That wraps up yeah, my man. questions, man. He passed my test. <laughs> <laughs> all, right. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Let me ask you something, though, because you, you, you did say that um, in the beginning uh, you, re- you really wasn't taking boxing kind of seriously. What changed for no. you? What, what, what made you decide, you know what? I'm going to start doing the right things and take this seriously so I can see where it goes. You know, what, what I think it was more to do with, you know, coming out in, on, in on top in decisions that, you know, I should have won. I should have won decisions. I never got them. But I never really gave boxing my all at the times I've lost. So when I've lost, I said, hold on. I've lost, like, you know, decisions that I should have got. But I never took it serious. So imagine I take it serious. What can I achieve? So if I put my life on the line, you know, in that situation, in 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 in, in the kind of statement, you know, what can I achieve in this game? So okay, start taking it serious. See where you can go. Yeah, yeah, that's that's actually. So it, it was more. It was, it was more. You know, it was more because I got good. I got decisions not taking it seriously, and I thought, you know what? If I do take it seriously, you know, the sky's my limit. Most definitely. See, man, and you know what? You know what, Philip? That's, that's in everything in life, man. Yeah. If you apply definitely. yourself 110, percent 
and you tell yourself there's no limit, you'll be a, you'll be surprised in what you can accomplish, man. You'll be Definitely. absolutely surprised. Keep that faith, mindset, faith, brother. Keep yeah. digging. Faith and faith, faith, faith and the mind is a powerful thing, you know. <laughs> Absolutely, mind over matter, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely, man. Let me ask you this one too, man. Now that you have, now that, have you seen a difference in your overall performance now that you decided to take the sport seriously? A hundred percent. I mean, I would never, like you know, three years ago, I would never, you know, make the make the plunge to go to Ukraine, a country that I I, I knew nothing about. I, I mean, I would never have taken an opportunity like that on a, on a normal day to day basis. But I thought, you know what? This is what about this is what you do. This is how you grow as a person, as a character. You know, taking opportunities, taking things serious. You know what I mean? You know, just just little just little crazy things that I, I would never have done before, like having a sports psychologist. You know, you know, having little things like that to say to yourself, like why 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 have you lost fights? You know, get into your mind. Like why have you lost fights? What what made you have a good performance? What made you have a bad performance? You know, little things like that have made me, you know, the, the guy I am right now, you know? Yeah, see that's 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 what's up, man. Now, I always I gotta ask this man. When you're dieting and you're getting ready for a fight, are you one of those guys that, that when you're dieting, man, you get angry? Or do you just realize, okay, it is what it is. It's one of them things. I no, just got to do this. It's, 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 yeah, it's just one of them for me. I'm just like, you know, at the end of the day, there's no point of worrying or, you know, stressing yourself because it's only for a time. You know, it's like pain. Pain's only for a time. Once that pain leaves you, you you'll be fine, you know? So I just think dieting and the training camp is just for a time. After that, you can chill and you can do what you want to do. But right until then, you you know, you got you got to just do what you got to do. Sacrifice have to be made. And you know you you're in a sport that you have to you have to make sacrifices. If you don't want to make sacrifices, don't box. It's that simple. Yeah, I I definitely totally agree with you, man. So, um, you uh you said you don't fight again until October. October the sixth. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, right now I'm just in the gym. I started camp yesterday. First first camp, like you know, sit for this fight in October. It'll be a ticking over fight. You know, I'll be an eight round fight. And then after that, you know, I'll be I'm looking forward to the um, announcement for me to um, fight for the Commonwealth title. Now let me ask you something: um, Is that what a road stops for you? Is that Commonwealth title, or or are you still gonna be hungry and you want no, more? No, man. No, listen, listen, listen. Let me let me say, let me show you one thing. All right. In this game now, yeah, boxers can go on for a long time. It's not like back in the days where guys finished at 31, 32. You know. You could look at a great guy like Mayweather, you know, he's 40 years old. Bernard Hopkins, he's gone past Mayweather and gone to like 50, you know what I'm saying? So nowadays, genetics, you know, um, genes also, just the way boxing is developed makes you go on for longer, you know? Like, Commonwealth titles never been my aspiration. My aspiration was to be world champion. Commonwealth mm -hmm. is just a stepping stone and I've had a lot of, I've had a lot of, you know, setbacks regarding, well, I've had a 20, I've had a tw 20 fights and I've had uh, 20 fights and won 17, lost three. And I mean, two of the decisions are, 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 are debatable, you know, but we you know we don't cry, cry over spilt milk. You know, we, we, we keep going. We're soldiers. We dust ourselves off. You know, we keep marching forward. So, you know, for me, Commonwealth title is just, it's just, you know, a stepping stone for me to get to what on is nowadays. All you need is you know, a lucky break, a break or a lucky mm -hmm. break. Just to say, you know, let me just let, let me see if I can fight this guy for a world title. They might think I'm a bum going there and shock the world. It's happened many times. Buster Douglas, it's happened, you know, um, I mean, I can't think of um, so many um, different boxes at the moment, but there's so many times you've been shocked in the world. You're like, oh my God, okay, Donald Curry versus Lloyd Hunnigan. That's another one that they thought yeah. he was a bum. Something shocked the world, you know? So, you know, this is, to me, it's all about world aspirations. Commonwealth title is not, is not enough for me, you know? I won't, I won't retire, I won't retire in two years' time and say, oh yeah, man, I achieved my dream. No, wait. Okay, I'm glad. <laughs> and, 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 and I'm glad, I'm really glad to hear that, man. That's good stuff. Uh, I say so. Are you still there? All right, I get, yes, I, I, sir. I'm okay. Here all right, yeah. All right. We, we we about to close it out. I got one more question for you, man. How do you how do you balance boxing and family at the same time? Is that is that are you finding that a little bit Good easier? Point. You know Good what? It's crazy. You know, I've, I've you know I've always had a supportive family. You know, I've always had a supportive family. Like, all my family support my career, so it's like. They know what they know what what it takes. They've been with me. They've seen what I had to have to go through, dieting, you know, ticket sales, you know, just being moody sometimes. So 
they all understand me. And I'm, I mean, if you have an understanding family, you'll be great. If you have a family that's trying to take from me, take from me, take from me, you will never ever accomplish your dreams, you know? So I think to balance family and boxing, I, I think your, your, your family is your boxing also. So it doesn't consume you, you know? Okay. Yeah. And, oh, you know what? One more question. I, one more question, man. When you win that Commonwealth title, a lot of attention yeah. is going to come your way. With attention yeah. comes fame, money, and with all of that comes problems. What are you doing yeah. right now to prepare yourself to make sure that, because we hear the stories about fighters who, you know, these promoters just grab them and they use them up. We, we hear these stories all the time. What are you yeah, doing to yeah. prepare yourself to make sure you have the right pieces in place to where, hey, when you're done with boxing, you're not one of these guys out here struggling. You've, you've been able to maintain. You know what? It's having a great family. I have a great mom and dad. You know, I have, you know, I have a great nuclear family. I have a great foundation. Also, you know, I'm a believer in God, in Christ, you know. So, I mean, these things are fundamental for me, you know. Like, you know, these are like, these are fundamental for me in the long run. Also, I've seen what's happened with great boxers that, you know, they're struggling financially. They've never done the right thing. Investments are never good, good thing, you know. And it's also just having just smart to know about contracts. I've, I've got people around me that know about contracts and stuff like that. So, at the end of the day, you know, you just got to just be smart, you know. It's all about being smart in this game. All right, man. That's it for me. You answered everything I wanted to hear you say. I'm going to get you back on because, uh, like I say, we've talked before. You know, I've been yeah, so yeah. busy, but I, I've been watching. Matter of fact, I saw you hitting the heavy bag earlier today. Yeah, you know, you yeah. pumping that jab. Yeah, you was yeah. using that jab. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Just working on the fundamentals, man. You know, just working on the those fundamentals. That was just the jab, you know. I, I mean, I have I have little exercises that I do, little drills that I do. I've, I've got a good team around me. I mean, I don't really believe so much that you need to have a boxing coach that's actually boxed professionally. I just, I believe that some people can have a good eye mm -hmm. and not having necessarily been in in the sport like all their life, you know. So I've got a good team around me. I've got good. I've got you know ex professional footballers that just help me with drills. I've got you know ex British champions. I've got people around. I always got people give me knowledge, and I've got good friends are in the game. You know, Billy Joe Saunders. I can phone him anytime. Give me, he gives me advice. You know, so I mean, I'm surrounded by the right people at, at the right time, you know. That's what's up. That's what's up. And we got an old saying over here. Those they can do, those they can't teach. So you're right about yeah. that. Sometimes you just because yeah. just you can't yeah. do it don't mean that you can't teach it. You're right about that. There you go. All right, man. We're going to sign this out, man. Yo, Phil, Philip, I want to thank you for being here. I like your name, Bose, because, you know, it's kind of close to mine. Bo, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, yeah, man. Uh, a little narcissism for the day. A little narcissism for the day now. But, hey, listen, I know my man has the silver bullet. I love that damn name. Yeah, I'm silver, silver, the silver man. bullet, baby. Yeah. Quicksilver. <laughs> Quicksilver, yeah. Thanks, Quicksilver. Thanks for having Quicksilver. me, man. Yeah, man, yeah. Thanks for having me on the show, man. No yeah, problem, man. no problem. Thanks for having hey, me. Hey, yeah. uh, say sorry. Tell everybody where they can find you at, man, if they want to talk boxing, man. Listen, yeah, man, man, you can find me at the one, the one and only exclusive Truth and Facts Sports Talk. That's right, baby. And you can find my articles at 3kingsboxing.com. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It's that free, y'all. <laughs> I took your word, bro. I know you did. <laughs> hey, Philip, tell everybody where they can find you at, man, if they want to continue to follow you and your training and, yeah, man, and your next follow fight. Yeah, man, you can follow me on Quicksilver Bows on Instagram, Philip Bows on Twitter. You know, my personal um, um page on Facebook is Philip Bows. So, yeah, man, you can follow me and keep up to my progress, man. All right, and this is man, Bo, Truth and Facts Sports Talk. Of course, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter, Truth underscore fact box one you can always catch me right here with my man say who is uh, uh who is a permanent addition to the show you can also catch my articles at three kings boxing and that is prodigy of boxing colossal boxing talk and uh and all those guys down there i want to thank my man here I, you know it's funny story is i was on my way walking out the gym and i saw philip and i said man let me hit him up and he was like yeah, i'm free now and <laughs> <laughs> that's, and that's, turned into a show real quick. Yeah, we turned it into a show. I was on my way out. So, man, I want to thank him for taking his time for being here. I want to thank my man, Sesa, for also taking time. He was dropping off his son, so I heard him get there safely. So I'd appreciate you doing that, man. Hey, thank both of you guys for being here. And, you know, even though I'm not thank a professional you, fighter, man, I'm still the greatest that y'all ever heard of. Peace. <laughs>